Um, good day, everyone. So this is a video meant for THT8 presentation. So before I proceed with the presentation, I would like to introduce myself and also my teammates. My name is Nurain Dwayti Mabzariza, my metric number is 20342. And then we have Shakira Binti Abdul Aziz, her metric number is 28830. And lastly, Nurusha Mimi, uh, her metric number is 201144. So, in today's presentation, we have three contents to be presented. The first one is listening for information. The next one is presenting initial demand or proposal. And lastly, asking for and giving clarification. So, let's get started. So, for the first one, listening for information. So in this um, section, we'll be talking about the questions that are normally, the type of questions that are normally used when um, listening for information. So we have four type of questions, which are echo question, checking question, probing question, and hypothetical question. So um, let's start with the echo questions. An echo question is a question that seeks to confirm or clarify another speaker's utterance by repeating it in some form. For example, there are two person talking, we have person A and person B. So let's say person A says that I am passing this project to Mr. Andrew as I'll be moving to Riverdale. So the person B, the person B will, be, will be responding with you're moving where? So the, the echo part is the moving part because he's asking, because the person B was asking again, where is he moving? And the second example was, sorry, was that RM, was that 13 ringgit or 30 ringgit? Since 13 and 30 ringgit sounds quite, uh, sound quite similar. So this person is asking is asking whether the question state whether the you know the utterance is now was 13 ringgit or 30 ringgit. The next question is checking question. A checking question is a question asked to check listeners' understanding on things that have been spoken, delivered, told or asked to do. For example, have you emailed me the draft of the paperwork? The next example is do you understand what I am saying? And the final example is, so let me check if I have understood you correctly. Are you saying that it would be impossible or just difficult? So these kind of questions are checking whether their understanding is correct or not. The third question, we have probing question. A probing question is asked in order to ask for more information on a particular matter. It is also meant to clarify a point or help us to understand the root cause of a matter so we know how best to move forward. For example, the first one is, why is your strategy working for your department? He's asking why the strategy isn't working so that they could dissect the cause or the root of the problem so that they could move forward with the best solution. The second example is, my paperwork has been rejected for a few times. So the second person responded, why do you think that is? He's asking, why does the person think that his people has been rejected for a few times? So the final questions we have is hypothetical question. So uh, a hypothetical question is based on supposition. It's not based on facts. It is typically used to elicit opinions and beliefs about imagined situations or conditions that don't exist. For example, if we say, sorry, for example, if we say, if you were the marketing officer, what would you do when facing these problems? So since this is a supposition question, it, this is us based on supposition, we use were instead of was because if we use were, it indicates that something, that thing will never going to happen. And the second example is you said you do not manufacture in batches of less than 10. Just thinking, out, just thinking aloud now, what if there was a way for us to guarantee to buy, say, 20 units over the next three years, would that work for you? So this, um, these examples are called hypothetical questions because these are all supposition, they're not facts. Hence, the use of the past tense and like word and also um, was in the uh, sentence. Uh, next, I'm going to pass this to the next presenter. Next, I will present about presenting initial demand or proposal. Next. So firstly, what is the purpose of presenting the initial demand or proposal? The purpose is to persuade the prospect to adopt the solution to a problem or the fulfillment of a need profit, uh, profit in their proposal. Next. So these are the language expression when presenting the initial demand or proposal. The first example is, we think the best way is to the second one is, I would like to propose or recommend that. 
And lastly, I would like to suggest a solution. Next. Uh, next is the language expression when justifying the initial demand or proposal. So the first example is the most important reason for this is, and the second one is, I am basing my solution on three idea or point or reason, which are firstly, secondly, thirdly. And the last example is one of the key reasons for this is, etc. etc. Okay, uh, I will pass uh, to the next presenter. Okay, so I will explain about asking for and giving clarification. Next. So there is a reason to ask for clarification in negotiation. So firstly, without clarification, misunderstandings are likely to occur, which may cause problems and barriers to reaching a beneficial outcome. Next is to reassure that both parties are generally interested and want to negotiate. And lastly, to ensure both parties have identified and understand of what has been said is correct. Next. So there is a language expressions when asking for clarification. Firstly, it must be non-judgmental questioning. For example, I don't feel clear about the main issue here. Next is about the summarizing and seeking feedback to its accuracy. For example, when you say, what did you mean? Next. So there are language expression when summarizing what was said by the other party. Firstly, we need to clarify the points to avoid misunderstanding with, uh, between both parties. So for example, is the let's look at the points we agree on. And next is both parties are amenable to the agreements. It is to ensure that both parties are agree with the with their agreements. So uh, for example, is let's just confirm the details, then next. Okay, lastly, there are phrases to clarify ideas in negotiation. So um, for example, we would like to propose that, and this phrases is used when uh, we start to giving out an idea to the other party. Perhaps a better idea would be, so this phrase is used when we are suggesting another idea to other parties. So next. Okay, I think that's all from S. Thank you.